These trucks carrying unsold produce from local supermarkets have made the day for NGO La Rochelle. With 10 chefs from Paris and over 30 volunteers from this part of northern France. Their job is to use such donations to feed people living in the migrant camp at Grand Sainte. Today we're getting food deliveries from five different local supermarkets. That's quite a hole. So we're getting ready to sort and store these items quickly. We're putting them in the kitchen behind. I'm checking that nothing has gone off. This one looks a bit that way, so I'm putting it aside to avoid any risk. While some might expect a simple soup kitchen, chefs here take a different approach, bringing fresh ideas to the table that are often seen in the capital's trendiest restaurants. We want our project to be ethical, with zero negative impact on the environment or mankind. It's complicated cooking with meat, as it must be halal, but vegetarian food goes with any religion, so it appeals to everyone. 160 lunches are made from a morning's hard work. Other organizations have handed out meals in the camp before, though rarely enough to feed so many families. Ranj, a young Kurdish Iraqi, has been living in the Grand Sainte camp for several months. He's discovering the fine flavors of French cuisine. Good. For dinner, La Rochelle's staff have come up with a novel idea, not just cooking for the people here, but with them too. And for this, they've set up a workshop, but it's had a mixed success, with only a handful of people showing up for the occasion. Some of those who do come have more experience in cooking for large groups than most might think. Goran's been cooking ever since the camp's construction. The camp existed before in Calais. You were already cooking? Yes. Yes. He cooks every day, from morning until nightfall, for the whole camp. In Calais, he served between two to 3,000 meals. Here, some 600 people daily. In the kitchen, they're doing a mighty job. This is where Goran helps prepare hundreds of Kurdish meals every day. The camp's huge kitchen was built in a former farm. We are here to help refugee and volunteering. And I'm a refugee, and I'm so happy I help my people that are refugee. And I, when I stay here and I help my people, every day we cook for them. And we want they feel happy and they eat Kurdish food, not your food, because they don't like your food, you know. Their meals are prepared in a traditional Kurdish way, with lots of oil, salt and chopped onions mixed with sliced pasta and rice. For Goran, the taste recalls many memories of home. Cooking for 600 people every day is a way many here keep the sense of a normal life. People get bored here because they are like in the wood chicken, you know. It is a close. You cannot go out to do anything, to have a job, to be normal people. I'm happy to see these people, the, my brothers, my nation. They are working together and they're helping each other. Of course, I'm happy. The Grand Sant camp is home to 1,500 people, including some 200 families with children. They've been living here since March. Rows of small wood cabins have finally replaced the tents which had sunk into the mud. With this change, some small businesses have been able to flourish. Most people still dream of reaching England, but in the meantime, they call this home, meaning some form of human connection is crucial. Our goal is to make them feel comfortable and safe and try to give them all we can. There's nothing fancy. We recycle food that would otherwise be thrown out, and it's volunteers who work here, so there's no cost to society. But it generates a real sense of humanity. It's this human interaction which provides some welcome relief from the many hardships of life in the camp, warming the heart of not only residents here, but volunteers too.
Joining me now in the studio is Maya Conforti from French NGO L'Auberge des Migrants. Hello, thank you very much for coming in. Hello. Now, during that report, you were just telling me a little bit about state involvement, because as far as I understand, the state didn't finance the setting up of this camp, but it is now very much involved. Could you talk us through that? Yes, so basically it was the mayor of uh, Grand Saint and uh, MSF, Doctors Without Borders, who actually set up the camp. And a few months ago, the government would that didn't like the setting up of the camp actually said we're going to take care of it. So they put in in charge an association mandated by them that's called the FAG that actually runs the camp. But obviously, as you've seen, many volunteers are helping to distribute clothing, to uh, bring the food to be cooked and so forth. Uh, L'Auberge, for example, uh, brings food three times a week to the population of 800 actually. That's the thing, so it's not 1,500 people currently there, it's 800 and that's because of a change in the rules of who they're prepared it's to let in. It's less people, yes, so they they they've want to diminish the size of the camp, so they're trying to say only the vulnerable people can go in, which is the women alone or the families. You still have some men that manage to go in because it's not a completely, it's not a closed camp, so you can always climb a fence type of thing. But that's what the attempt is at being done. Do you think the mayor is under pressure from the authorities or perhaps the government to keep it small? I think he doesn't want it to have to be too big and to be, uh, you know, he wants it to be in a, in a good proportion to the population of the city, which is uh, actually correct. And I just think that uh, it should be like that in every city in France. In I was fact. going to ask you, do you think his attitude, his welcoming attitude, his reaction to the situation in his part of France is one to be emulated? Absolutely. I mean, what he has done is wonderful. And um, we need to have all the mayors of France to have the same attitude as uh, as he does. And as a matter of fact, the the camp in Calais, which has 10,000 people, are going is going to be dismantled uh, sometimes in the next few weeks or in the next couple of months. And at least half of those people will be sent to those accommodation centers throughout France. And we need to have mayors that are welcoming to the refugees. Do you think some will go to Grand Saint and they need to be prepared for a a big influx? It could, it could very well be because, you know, ha about half the population will be ready to ask for asylum or have already asked for asylum of the population in Calais and the other half really wants to go to the UK. So they will either set up new little camps or they'll go to Grand Saint. There could be many different combinations. That's the thing, because so many of them want to go to the UK, they might not prepared, be prepared to go to other parts oh, of France, no matter go. how good the welcoming yes. is and how good the facilities at the camp might be. Yeah, but the the... The welcoming is needed for, let's say, half the population. That's 5,000 people who are going to be uh, dispatched in many places in France. And these people need help and they need support uh, in where they're going to be moved. So we need many volunteers to, uh, to get involved in that. And we actually have set up. Uh, you know, Facebook pages and so forth to uh, encourage people to get involved, and it's really working. But you have the other half of the population. What I'm, what we really worried about is the fact that there are over a thousand unaccompanied minors in the camp in Calais, and how is the government going to single out these minors and do something with them? That's a very difficult question that he has to answer. You were saying that your appeal for volunteers is working, so people who don't even live close to either Grand Saint or Calais can still get involved. In what way can they help? Uh, they can get, they can become volunteers around those accommodation centres. There will be uh, French classes needed, uh, you know, uh, social well-being for these people who just arrive in a town knowing nothing about France because they of they've been is in a camp in Calais. So they need support, they need friendship, they need uh, French les lessons, they need uh, help if they have problems with their health or, or with their paperwork and things like that. So I highly recommend that anybody who feels uh, close to this uh, situation gets involved and they can do it right in their region now.
And we saw in the report that there are even asylum seekers prepared to help themselves in the sense Absolutely. that they're going to help prepare meals. And some of these meals are actually meals that remind them of home. Uh, do you think that's, it's a small thing, but it's an important one perhaps to, to make it's them feel huge. better? It's huge. I mean, we all want to eat the food from home. All of us human beings are like that. And, and these refugees, they want to work. They don't want to be bored. They want to learn French. They want to cook. They want to get involved. They want, you know, they even often ready to, to, uh, to, to work, you know, cut wood, anything that they can be done. It, I, it's important for the, for the human spirit to not be bored. Do you think the government, because it's concentrating so much on the cost and, and perhaps the upset we saw in Calais recently, transport disrupted, obviously there's a lot of anger and frustration there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that because of that, the government perhaps isn't focusing enough on what they can bring us, what they can provide to French society? Absolutely. It's never, it's absolutely never talked about. I think the government needs to do a much bigger work to show the French population that, you know, the arrival of refugees can be an opportunity and is not... A burden. Um, do you, you were mentioning before about volunteers, do you think that because there's such a need for volunteers, the government in effect isn't really doing its job? The government is always doing too little too late. It's nothing new. But you know, that there is an involvement of French citizens, I think is a good idea. What's important is that the government uses and and uh, you know works well with the citizens that want to get involved we can do wonderful work if that happens that's what we're trying to make happen right now all right so the message is get involved if you can thank you very much maya conforti you're welcome from l'auberge des migrants for joining us for today's focus thank you